గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ వెల్కమ్ టు విటియు ఈ శిక్షణ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఐఎమ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ప్రకాష్ కేఆర్ ఫ్రమ్ ద నేషనల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ మైసూరు ఐ వాస్ టేకింగ్ క్లాస్ ఆన్ నిమాటిక్స్ అండ్ నిమాటిక్స్ కంట్రోల్స్ సో వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ హౌ టు మేక్ యూజ్ ఆఫ్ యాక్చుయేటర్స్ హౌ టు మేక్ యూజ్ ఆఫ్ యాక్చుయేటర్స్ టు కన్స్ట్రక్ట్ to construct various simple circuits so today we will be taking a little more into other control aspects of the pneumatics so i was telling uh, if you take a hoop uh, and you have some pins or banana mangoes or uh, orange something like that to dispense that to the next station how one can make use of uh, pneumatic cylinders at the bottom with a roller type of pin sensors so we have discussed this circuit in the last class and i have said about uh, the conditions with respect to the problem statement so i have uh, expressed uh, uh, all the details of uh, when the pin sensors are exhausted it has to stop in that condition we have taken and we have uh, discussed about two circuits two different alter, alter, alternative circuits and uh, there are many such cases can be done for example if you take a rotary indexing table as one more example if if you take so just take the problem using a rotary index table a plastic containers passing on the conveyor are to be separated in q so we can have a machine like this so there are multiple sensors which are being used here by pressing a hand push button the oscillating piston rod of a cylinder steps uh, the rotary table so rotary table will start ro rotating and one after the other that can be unloaded on the other side so like that many such simple simple cases are being uh, uh, used in industries and uh, uh, low cost automation part of the industry concentrate on making use of the pneumatics uh, to generate an automatic motion of the part, parts within the machine or sometimes uh, to the fms cells also in some cases so now today we are concentrating on flow control valves and how we can make use of the flow control valves to uh, control the speed of the cylinders today i'll be talking about mainly on the flow control valves and speed control aspects of it speed control of pneumatic cylinders so it is always necessary because sometimes uh, if you uh, uh, do it with fast there can be a, an error sometimes in the process so sometimes you you may have to reduce it for example i'll tell you if you are uh, washing utensils so sometimes you reduce your knob so because you want to give more time to the washing so and uh, uh, without wasting the water you can reduce the water and uh, make your process slow so making the process slow by adjusting so that means we are conventionally in the daily life also we are applying the concept taking such a concept in the industry which uses pneumatics so it is always necessary to reduce the speed of the cylinder from maximum speed to a selected levels uh, for the final controls and the speed control of pneumatic cylinders can be conveniently achieved by regulating the flow rate of the valve uh, air flow flow rate of the air which is done through a valve called flow control valves so which we can also control two ways one is supply air can be controlled or the ex, uh, exit air or exhaust air can be controlled so there are two methods in it one is supply air control and the another one is exhaust air control the volume flow rate of air can be controlled by using the control valves now let us come to the uh, basics of the flow control valve there are different types of flow control uh, valves which are available in the market to suit the industry requirements so now uh, the, the first one this this figure shows 
a flow control van. This figure shows the flow control van, a simple bidirectional flow control van. Okay. So, symbolic representation of simple bidirectional flow control valve is uh, a line with the two arcs like this and then arrow which shows that it is controllable, it is adjustable. So, now uh, with this if you control, suppose I, I call this as x and this as y. So, I can say uh, if the flow is passing from here to here, if I have turned the knob of the valve to a some percentage, maybe 20 percent, 30 percent, that much uh, 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 control I am establishing in the valve, so the reduced flow will flow on the other side. As it is bidirectional, suppose if I give input at y and take the output x, keeping the uh, turning of the knob at same 20 or 25 percent. Again, so, the, this is input, this becomes output and at that time output gets reduced, the flow of the output gets re reduced. So, that is why we can call this as this side and as well as this side, bidirectional flow control valves. So, uh, now let me take uh, the other type, the other one is uh, one way flow control valve. The figure here shows one way flow control valve, symbolic representation of a one way flow control valve. In the one way flow control valve, you can see that an additional uh, line has been taken with a, a ball and a ball attachment like this. So, that means suppose if I consider x here as an input. So, air is going to travel from input to output y if you take like this, air will pass through this uh, the, the direction of the umbrella and as well as my flow directions are same. So, the air cannot go in this path. So, the air cannot go in this path. So, air is compulsorily allowed only in this path, only in the upper path. So, the reduction uh, whether you have turned by 25 percent or 30 percent that is reduced and move to the y. Now observe, suppose if you change the input, that means the input supply is given here and the output you are taking at this side, if you take the output at this side. So now input air is at y side and the input air is coming from this side and the direction of this umbrella and the flow directions are opposite now if you observe here. So, just if you observe this here, if you observe the umbrella here, so you can see my flow direction and umbrella direction are opposite. So, it can push the ball and move easily in this path. Whereas, this is the high resistance path, the upper one is a high resistance path and the air will travel in this path completely without any restriction. So, that means full air whatever the input I give here, so whatever the input I give here now at y will travel through this path, so like this in this path and move to x. So, uh, without any restriction. That means a rapid retraction can happen using this. So, if you ask what is the advantage of such valves, you can control in one direction. Forward can be controlled, that means forward can be made slow, the reverse is rapid. So, a, a creep and rapid kinds of things can be obtained in a complete one cycle, that is forward slow, retraction fast. So, these kinds of uh, arrangements can be made by using the appropriate flow control valves in the circuit path. So, uh, apart from these two, basically uh, for you, you have a basic these two and apart from these two, there are other flow control valves which are available. Uh, one is uh, uh, pressure compensated flow control valves uh, and the other one is temperature compensated flow control valve. We will see one by one in the later sections. So, let me uh, 
uh, start with the conventional basic uh, bidirectional flow control valve and uh, uh, one way flow control valve in the beginning. Now, if you take a one way flow control valve, this valve is also called as the throttle relief valve, generally used for the speed control of cylinder and is installed in the working pressure lines between the final control valve and the cylinder port. Normally, that means it is kept very close to the cylinders. That is the one, one thing you have to understand, which is kept very close to the cylinder ports. So, that is means at the end element, actuator, nearby actuators. So, this is the way the installation of these valves will be made. Now, if you take the one way flow control valve. So, a one way flow control valve has a needle and an orifice arrangement. A non written valve, this is important here, a non written valve in the form of, uh, of an elastic diaphragm is secured to the bottom of the wall orifice. So, the diaphragm when subjected to air pressure from the top seals against the seat in the wall body and prevents the air flow to the downstream side. So, that is from one side it retracts. From the other side it lifts up and move uh, easily. So, we will see that how the constructionally this wall will work in the subsequent slides. So, now this is the uh, picture which is showing one way flow control valve. Okay. So, in this if you observe, so uh, there is a, a knob arrangement which is controlling a, a spool rod here uh, with a conical uh, this which seals the valve here in this origin in this part you can see this here it's, you can observe this part okay and once the air is passed here so it will flow in this direction and presses this valve okay against the seal and no flow can go to this side Whereas, now, now if you take, if you take if you take the flow from this side now, if you take the flow from this side, the air will travel here, lifts the seal here, the seal is lifted here and then it allows the air to pass through the other port. So, this is how from here air cannot flow because it restricts here the seal seals the seal passage here and no air flows further. So, whereas from here to here it lifts the seal up and moves this way and it comes to the other side. So, that is why we call this as one way flow control valve. Okay. So, the same way here in the symbol you can see while you pass it from here to here, uh, it cannot move in this path, it has to pass through the restricted path and when we pass the air from this side, the air will travel in this path, pushes this seal arrangement and moves back and easily the full complete air flows to the other section. The same when you compare this wall and this wall inside structures you can understand is easily how the ceiling. Ceiling is ceiling part is shown here in the uh, circular portion here. Uh, this is this portion which has been shown separately for your understanding. So, now if you observe how this works, you can observe this when you pass the air from this side, it is lifting the seal. If you observe it here, you can see that the, the red seal which is given here is lifted. So, it lifts the seal and moves to this section. Okay. Now, we will come to the application of the flow control valve. How do we can use the flow control valves in uh, the circuit part to get the speed control activity or actions, speed control aspects of the cylinder. So, now as I have told you, so, the flow controls are, valves are preferably placed close to the actuators 
So we are fixing the one way flow control valves two numbers that is 1V1 and 1V2 very close to the actuator ports and then uh, from there if you take this circuit the source then to the FRL unit from the FRL unit I am taking a two input elements and one control element. So two input elements are 1S1 and 1S2. The nature of this 1S1 and 1S2 is push button type. So with uh, 3 by 2 that is 3 port and 2 position configuration spring written type. So when you press this, so 1 gets connected to 2. When you press 1S1, 1 gets connected to 2. So that means you will be uh, doing this process. Okay. So this gets connected here. So the air will move to this one four side at that point of time the this gets activated and the air will connect to, from here to here okay that is air will travel to this side and it lifts the complete air so the air will travel in this path okay and the complete air will go to the cylinder side this side complete air will go to the cylinder blank end side and pushes the cylinder forward. So uh, in the forward whatever the air is there as the piston starts moving this side air will move through this line. It cannot move in this passage. It cannot move in this passage because the flow direction and umbrella directions are same. So it will take this path. This path if you restrict the flow then the cylinder will become slow. So that is how you can reduce the speed here. So the complete air is going on this side whereas the flow on this side is being restricted using a flow control valve here. So the control vent that is your ex exhaust is being controlled. So uh, that is how you can reduce the speed of the forward stroke. Now if I press the other side let us take now the other case that is if I press a 1 S2 so 1 gets connected to 2 here so that is this this gets connected here okay air will travel from 1 to 2 to 1 to of the port of the uh, 5 by 2 a memory valve and that will take the position of this valve and in that case the air will travel to this path and uh, pressurized air will lift this valve, lift this valve and move to the blanket uh, rod side of the piston. So on this side air, this side air will be vented through this path, vented through this path because it cannot go in this path. So if you have restricted uh, this flow control valve, the due to the restriction that you have created, the air will move slowly to the exhaust and your speed of the retraction is controlled means forward control is achieved using this valve and reverse control can be achieved using this valve. So in this fashion we can fix our uh, valves uh, on either side or one side or depending upon the requirement and adjust the flow control valves uh, which are provided here to make our speed slow uh, our control flow. Now uh, as we have now understood about uh, fitting of the flow control valve and adjustment of the flow control valve, I have told you there are two methods of controlling the speed. One is referred to as supply air control or supply air throttling. So in that case the supply air entering the cylinder through either the working port undergoes a throttling as the non written valve is closed in the direction of the flow you get uh, uh, the supply air is controlled at this point of time. During the exhaust the compressed air leaving the cylinder is bypassed through a non written valve and escapes freely. So this is a very very important. So it goes freely when in the exhaust side the inlet side is controlled here exhaust side is left free okay 
So that is that is the in the supplier throttling method, we control the supplier. We leave the exhaust air easily, means freely. So supplier throttling is used for single acting cylinders and uh, small volume cylinders, not, not normally to a, a bigger size cylinders. They are incorporated to the small sized cylinders. Exhaust air throttling. As the name itself says, here we are going to do a exhaust air is being controlled. So take this word, uh, take, read this, supply air flows freely to the cylinder, supply air flows freely to the cylinder through the bypass passage of the non-retin valve and the supplier does not undergo any throttling. So complete air is going to go forward in the uh, passage here. So whereas exhaust air leaving the cylinder that is on the other side, rod side has been uh, uh, has to undergo a throttling as the non-retin valve is closed in the retin direction. Okay, and the position of the uh, position uh, and the piston is loaded between two cushions of the air and the exhaust throttling should also always be used for a double acting cylinders. Okay, and it should not be used for single acting cylinders and not suitable for small volume cylinders. This is one of the important thing that you have to understand. One more important uh, point that you have to remember here is air is compressible in nature. So many of the cases what happens is if you uh, put a supplier controls you can find a little bit of jerkiness uh, if it is a vertical loading uh, loaders. Uh, one example I will tell you in uh, uh, air conditioning refrigeration unit one of the industry uh, they used to hold the uh, connecting rod assemblies and uh, uh, shafts and bring down it to the centerless grinder. But as you hold it like this, so when you bring it down, the cylinder can shake and this, this vibration uh, sometimes uh, uh, make the shaft to fall on the grinder. So that is why in many of such critical cases, we suggest that use the exhaust air control because there will be a cushioning kinds of uh, 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 thing that you get due to the compressibility nature of the uh, air. Air is slightly compressible, okay. Uh, air is compressible, so you get a cushioning effect and just you, it, it moves slowly. Speed control of the cylinders. Here in this figure I have uh, fitted uh, the uh, throttle valves for a supplier throttling condition and exhaust air throttling condition. The left side shows supplier throttling, this figure shows the supplier throttling and this figure shows the exhaust air throttling. Now observe how this, this can be uh, seen as a supplier. So now in the existing condition, so now uh, air is going to this side, okay, and this side is now can air can move freely from this path and it is venting to port number 5, so which is an exhaust port. So one is source, so now 3 and 5 are exhaust ports, one is going to 2 and air is going on this direction and this side air is connected to the vent 5. So the cylinder is at its retracted position. Now if I press this 1S1, if I press this 1S1, if I press this, so I am going to replace this position by this position. So at that point of time 1 gets connected to here. So uh, air will pass, uh, compressed air will flow in this path and it cannot go in this direction. So it will pass through the restricted pass path like this and the air will go here and uh, this will push the cylinder. Uh, this side air at that point of time will go from this path to the exhaust. 
okay so to the exhaust so now as now here if you observe it the air which is going here is controlled it is not allowed here and it is controlled and pass through this point okay so here this side no control is given no control is been given here no control here no control whereas air is controlled here air is controlled here controlled here here no control here we are going to control the air so that is why we call this as uh, supply air control okay so that is the reason we call this circuit as a supply air control so uh, if you take out your hand back so this will this position gets replaced by this position at that point of time one gets connected to two air cannot go in this path and air will uh, restrict and go again it will be an inlet control okay and this side air exhaust now this is the exhaust air now that goes freely through this path to the exhaust so either in this both the conditions the inlet air is being controlled outlet air is being allowed freely so that is why we call this circuit as a supply air control now if you observe this figure if you observe this figure so the air source is this so it is coming from here so uh, air is going to this passage and air uh, the flow direction now the flow direction this is the my flow direction and the umbrella direction are opposite now in this case so it pushes it pushes the ball it pushes the ball and flows here in this path so air flows to this path okay and this side air this side air it cannot move in this path it cannot move in this path so it has to pass through this pass through the flow control valve so the air get restricted here means controlled here and the controlled air is left to the vent atmosphere so that is why we call this as exhaust air control now suppose if i press 2s1 so if i press the push button 2s1 uh, valve push button so i am replacing this position by this position at that point of time so this is my one so the port one so the port one now will be here and this gets connected like this and the air will flow like this the flow direction is this and the umbrella direction is this so they are in opposite direction it pushes the ball up and the complete air flows in this part and uh, the pressurized air will go on this side and the cylinder air on this side will be moved it cannot move in this path it cannot move it passes through a restricted passage that is this valve flow control valve and the restricted flow will go to the vent so hence it is also called as exhaust air control so inlet air is allowed freely okay and exhaust is being controlled now if i uh, take the other position let us observe the previous condition if i release the 2s1 the valve will move from this position to this position in that condition also the air will go here directly free pushing this ball up okay and this side is being that means exhaust air is being controlled in both the positions we are trying to control the exhaust air and get the motion control here in this case in both the positions we are trying to control the supply air and get the control of the cylinder so that is why this is called as supply air control and this is called as uh, exhaust air control so now uh, as i told in many of the cases supply air control can be preferable it can even uh, give a cushioning effect sometimes 
and uh, vertically uh, vertical loads are to be handled at that time you can prefer the uh, supplier controls. Yeah. I have explained you about supplier throttling and exhaust air uh, throttling concepts with respect to the speed control of uh, cylinders in pneumatics. So, now we will move on to uh, effects we call it as a stick slip effect. So, there is a, a limitation uh, in achieving or in achieving smooth movements of cylinders as I told with a low speed setting of flow control valves. This results in a jerky motion of piston sometimes which is also called as stick slip effect. So, uh, when the flow control valve is set for low flow rates, it takes considerable time for the supplier to build, okay, build up to the required pressure behind the piston. So, every time this pressure is reached, the piston jerks in the direction so, uh, of the motion, which results in an increase in cylinder volume in the increase in cylinder volume. This further results in drop in pressure in the cylinder and the piston momentarily halts until the pressure builds up. So, this is uh, important. So, this holding and leaving kinds of what you can see sometimes is called as a stick slip motion. You can observe these kinds of motions in air especially when you have a, uh, 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 you, when you are trying to achieve a smooth motions with a load speed settings of the flow control valves. So, this phenomena is called as stick, uh, stick slips motion and you have to be carefully adjusting this uh, to eliminate the such jerks. The next uh, topic uh, is uh, one more type of valve which is extensively used in certain applications where we want to have a fast retraction or fast motion required that is re referred to as a quick exhaust valve. So, what is the advantage of this valve that we have to understand? So, in many application especially with the single acting cylinders, it is a common practice it is, it is this, this is important single acting cylinders. It is common practice to increase the piston speed during the retraction. So, this will go whereas, the retraction is made faster. So, you are saving your cycle time. One cycle time is doing the forward stroke and then completing the uh, return stroke. Suppose, if you have taken this uh, this is as per the requirement you need to go some some speed, but whereas the idle one the return can be moved fast. So, you can save some uh, total cycle time by retracting faster. So, that can be done in case of a uh, single acting cylinders by using a quick exhaust valves. So, this is carried out by incorporating a quick exhaust valve that I will show you in the next slide how this can be uh, implemented in the circuit level. So, this is the symbolic representation, this is the symbolic representation of a quick exhaust valve. If you observe this valve, you can see it is like a R valve, you can see uh, the uh, floating opening and closing on either side here and the inner uh, output line, two line. Uh, which from which you have taken an air and the air can be released to the three with a rapid this. As you know, the three port is bigger also. So, if you observe this three, so the port of the three is bigger and which is fitted with a silencer. So, because it should not make noise when it is suddenly releases the air. So, this part is a silencer, this part is a silencer. So, and uh, uh, as we rushes the all the air through this path from 2 to 3. So, we are fitting a silencer, so it reduces the noise of the uh, noise when it is leaving out the system. And the quick exhaust valve has essentially 3 ports, the supply port is 1. So, this is your supply port, this is your supply port. 
is connected to the output of the final control element, directional control valve in the circuit. So, which will be connected to the DCV, DCV valve and the output port 2 of this valve is directly fitted on onto the working port of the cylinder and the exhaust port 3 is left open to the atmosphere that is this one okay, which is left open to the atmosphere. So, uh, this is how uh, the symbolically we represent the quick exhaust and uh, this is how we connect the uh, quick exhaust in the circuits. I will show you how this valve will work and then I will also show you how to fix in the circuit level. If you observe this figure now, so this is the construction of the valve, uh, quick exhaust valve, the port 1, the supply port 1 and this is your working port which will be connected to DCV as we said in the earlier cases and this is your 3 which is connected to vent and the line okay? and uh, as you passes the air, pressurized air from here, if you pass the pressurized air from here. So, the seal, the red one is a seal, so which, uh, which lifts up and seals this passage and uh, all the air will go from here to here. So, at the time this V groove gets closed, so all the air from here will move to this side. So, closing this point. Okay. So, now when, uh, when you stop this one, at that point of time, this air which is there on the working side will move, will move, I will just erase this part, you can understand it now, the air will move from here, it, it cannot move, so this gets expands here, the seal gets expands and pushes down and sits here, so that means you are closing the port 1 and all the air here will go to 3. So, that means the path that it takes is this path. So, this path. So, the air from here will be vented. This is a bigger port. If you observe, this is the bigger port that is this side. We, ha we have silencer fitted here. Somewhere here we will be fixing the silence. Suddenly, we are rushing. So, the air which has been used on the other side will be left to the atmosphere directly. So, uh, the time uh, to re release the air is less here. So, the rest, uh, faster moments can be achieved with that concept. Now, if you observe this now, so the air is moving to this path. Okay? So, there are two, two things. Uh, the first one is this figure. So, the one gets connected to two in this. In the next figure, two gets connected to three. So, if you observe this, 2 gets connected to 3. So, the, the, at that time, the, uh, this gets seated on the seat here and this path gets opened up and uh, all the air from 2 will live through the 3. Now, uh, this, is, this is the quick exhaust valve as I have told you, quick exhaust valve valves are connected in the single acting cylinder. So, uh, you can uh, take a quick exhaust valve and fix it very close to the actuator. So, this is the area where you can concentrate. So, now if you observe, so how this works. So, uh, now it is a, a 1S1 is a push button type, 3 port, 2 position valve. So, normally closed, normally closed, when you press this 1S1, 1 gets connected to 2, so that means this path gets connected and the air will go from 1 to 2, 1 to 2. So, this will move forward, this will move forward. So, so now if you take out this back, take out your this back, the air gets blocked here. So, all the air which was there on the, this side will not come here, will not come here. Instead of that, 
it gets released from here to here. So, that is why your retraction will be faster, you are leaving the air here itself. So, this is how we can reduce the uh, time uh, of the cylinder uh, to take more time if, if you are releasing up to here slowly then the air has to come and release through this port. So, we are suddenly releasing here, so that time gets reduced and your cylinder will move uh, retract fast. The same way if you fix up the uh, exhaust, quick exhaust valves to the, to the double acting cylinder, you can take 5 by 2 way push button type switch 2 S 1 push button operated. So, 1 now 1 is connected to 2 and this goes to this side ok and this side air is being vented ok. So, now if you press it, if you press it, so the 1 gets connected to 4 and this side air is here and this side air is passes through this path uh, here, but when you release it, it releases fast and makes a retraction ok. So, that is how you can make use of the quick exhaust valves in the circuit to speed up your process. For example, these kinds of valves can be used in many such uh, applications. Suppose you consider uh, a, a molten metal furnace. So, you are taking the molten metal through a, a ladder okay, uh, uh, and uh, just pouring it onto the die. So, when you do like that, normally you are dipping this while it goes, it has to go slow because it is having the uh, molten metal in it ok and uh, whereas in the retraction you can move it little rapid. So, your application is achieved because if you do not move faster, so if you move it slow the liquid molten metal gets solidifies in the uh, cup and over a period of time uh, the as it gets solidified every time uh, little little your cup will size gets reduced the volume uh, handling capacity of this keeps on reduces. In order to avoid that, the people in industry retracts this faster as much as faster without disturbing the molten uh, liquid. So, it should not hit the liquid because as you know, uh, if this is at a very high temperature, it should not go and hit. Whereas, you can make it move little faster and go to the respective position. Whereas, still we do not suggest such an action uh, in case of sudden retractions sometimes. So, for such applications we prefer control of both the sides. So, means the circuit which is designed to meet these kinds of requirements should be able to have a control for forward and as well as for the reverse. So, how do we do this by fitting up the flow control valves. So, observe this liquid metal is drawn from a uh, crucible. So, this is your crucible ok, smelting crucible by a, a ladle ok, by a casting ladle and a uh, and cast in molds. The rising and the lowering of the ladle is controlled by a separate manual push button. The rising and lowering speed is controlled separately this is interesting, uh, this read this statement rising and lowering speed is separately adjustable. That means, this should also be make slow or fast as per the requirement, both this also to be made controllable. So, both this and this has to be made controllable according to the customer's requirement in this case. Now, for such a circuit, we prefer uh, the circuit like this. In this case, if you observe, there are uh, two valves, input element valves. So, with uh, 3 by 2, 3 by 2 uh, valves like this. So, if you press this, one gets connected to 2 here and this valve will function like this now. This position gets replaced here and air will pass from 1 to 4 and this side as the arrow direction and umbrella direction is opposite, it moves faster here and this side air 
is uh, cannot move in this path, it cannot move in this path. So, it has to pass through the res restricted path, 50 percent is the restriction is given. So, re reduction is 50 percent now, slowly the air goes to the exhaust part. So, this becomes slow, this becomes slow due to this condition we are controlling here. So, now in the reverse direction, if you take the uh, operation of the other valve, if you press this valve, so one gets connected to two here, so that is one gets connected to two here and the air supply will go to one two port of the valve and which in turn takes this valve, uh, this position. So, air gets connected to 1 to 2 here and the air will move from this path without any control, it goes to this side, okay. it goes to this side and this side air, this side air cannot move in this path, it cannot go in this path. So, it has to pass through this restriction, the restriction here is 23 percent. So, control is now around 23 percent control that we have turned the knob uh, to 23 percent control. So, controlled air will go to the exhaust port. So, again the retraction is slower, but comparatively uh, it can be set at different configuration 23 percent opening if you keep. So, if you said that 23 percent is opening, so then this is much slower than this one. Okay. Like that, you can consider the control percentage, either how much control you want to do. So, uh, based on that, you can predict that which, which side is slower. So, now the circuit meets the requirement set above. Now, we want to control this as well as this. So, that has been achieved through this circuit diagram. So far, so far we have uh, uh, completed now flow control concepts with simple circuits. Now I will move on to, I will move on to my next session uh, which is on the signal processing devices that will be continued in my next class.